The Mississippi River is drying up water levels in some areas near historic lows. What just happened with Mississippi River shocked scientists. An impending crisis looms over the mighty Mississippi River as record low water levels and drying riverbeds grip the region. Over 20 million people rely on this iconic river for their daily drinking water, yet it is dwindling before their very eyes. The consequences are dire. A threatened food supply, disrupted shipping channels, and the intrusion of salt water, posing a grave risk to public health. Let's talk about what happened in the Mississippi River that shocked scientists. The situation is quite grave everywhere in the United States. Dryness ranges from abnormal to moderate and across around 80% of the country's surface at this time. Other areas are experiencing exceptional and extreme drought, with several counties being completely parched by Category D4 conditions. Before going any further, let's talk about where can one find the basin of the Mississippi River. The Mississippi River Basin is located roughly in the geographic center of the United States and has rivers and tributaries that originate in 31 of those states. The Mississippi River is the primary artery of the system. It originates in Lake Itasca in Minnesota and travels through the midsection of the United States before emptying into the Gulf of Mexico in Louisiana. The Mississippi receives water from two large rivers that originate in the west as well as one big river that originates in the east. So which rivers contribute? The main stem of the river is known as the Mississippi River, and it travels approximately 2,350 miles in length from north to south. The Missouri River, which originates in the northwest, flows into the Mississippi River. It flows down to St. Louis, which is where it eventually meets up with the Mississippi River after beginning its journey in Montana. In terms of length, the Missouri River surpasses that of the Mississippi. The Arkansas River has its headwaters in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado and then runs easterly and southeasterly until it meets up with the Mississippi River near Napoleon, Arkansas. From the east, the Ohio River eventually empties into the Mississippi. It flows to the southeast, ending up at Cairo, Illinois, after beginning in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The Mississippi River Basin recently experienced the worst drought in the last 1,200 years. Why is this? There is evidence that the Missouri River was at its lowest level between the years 2000 and 2010 compared to any other time in the past 1200 years, as stated in recent research. The water levels in the Mississippi River, as well as the water levels throughout the entire Mississippi River Basin, have been significantly impacted as a result of this. The findings of the study were summarized as follows by researchers. We find that temperature has increasingly influenced the severity of drought events by decreasing runoff efficiency in the basin since the late 20th century in the 1980s onward. The snowfall in the Rocky Mountains is decreasing as a direct result of climate change, which has also led to an increase in temperature. There is a small possibility that this could cause a ripple effect. The Mississippi River Basin receives its water supply from the snow that melts in the Rockies. The rising temperatures cause an increase in the amount of water that is lost to evaporation along the entire system of rivers and lakes. What are the primary contributors to the rise in temperature? There is some disagreement over the primary reason for rising temperatures and changes in the climate, but there are a few factors that are generally brought up in discussions. Human activity is the cause of increased greenhouse gas concentrations, according to NASA. They mean by activities things like the burning of fossil fuels, or oil and coal, which leads to an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Since the 1750s, there has been a 50% increase in the amount of carbon dioxide found in the atmosphere. Because these greenhouse gases keep the warm air in the atmosphere where it can't escape, the temperature of the globe continues to rise. Since the beginning of the 18th century, there has been a 2.5-fold increase in the levels of methane, and there's also been a 20% increase in the levels of nitrous oxide just since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. Even if you do not live near the Mississippi River, you may feel the effects of the historically low water levels that the river has been experiencing. The Senior Vice President of Waterways Council, Inc., Deb Calhoun, stated that the Mississippi and Ohio rivers are among the most important arteries of commerce for the United States in terms of surface transportation and that they are essential to the continued operation of the nation's agricultural sector. George Flaggs Jr., mayor of Vicksburg, Mississippi, discusses his concerns over the river, where the amount of cargo activity has decreased, and boats have been left stranded. 
It was also stated that now is the height of harvest, which was broadcast on Fox Weather. Therefore, transporting all of those agricultural items from farms in the Midwest and elsewhere across the country to the Gulf of Mexico to export them. These international customers are looking to the United States to purchase these goods, and they rely on the U.S. inland waterway infrastructure as the most efficient and cost-effective method for transporting large quantities of bulk commodities. It has been 10 years since the water levels of the Mississippi River dropped to their current level, which is the lowest level in which they've ever been recorded. They have dropped to such a low level that seawater from the Gulf of Mexico is making its way upstream to fill the void. The Lower Mississippi River Forecast Center reports that water levels are at or below the low water threshold over a nearly 400-mile stretch of the river, beginning near the point where the Ohio and the Mississippi River meet and continuing southward to within a few miles of Vicksburg, Mississippi. According to Calhoun, the inland waterway system is critically important for agricultural products, of course, as well as energy products to keep the lights and power on. In terms of cement, moving steel, and aggregate materials, it is essential for our construction and building trades. We also move enormous goods in our inland system, such as the blades of wind turbines, among other things. However, because of the low water levels that have been affecting the Mississippi River, some cargo ships have become stuck. The question now is, what are the other options? Well, unfortunately, we need Mother Nature to cooperate, Calhoun remarked. We need her to dump approximately a month's worth of rain steadily over several days to make up for this deficit. The United States Army Corps of Engineers, which is in charge of maintaining the nation's network of inland waterways, has done an excellent job of dredging. Farmer Alan Meadows expresses his concerns to Fox Weather's Nicole Valdez about the low water levels on the Mississippi, which have caused a pause in the river shipping of crops. However, because dredging takes time, there is currently a backlog of vessels waiting to transfer products because of the delay caused by the process. Because of additional time, it may potentially hit many of us where it hurts the most, our wallets. Those impacts on consumers are yet to be seen, added Calhoun. If we don't get any rain and commerce should stop on our waterways, as I said, it's still moving slowly. You could see higher prices for your electricity, he said. You might notice an increase in the price of meat at the grocery store as well as an increase in the price of building and construction materials. The issue, why is the Mississippi River drying up, is a very crucial one for the 20 million Americans that were cited. On this visit, we hope to shed some light on the situation at hand. At this time, 16% of the state is experiencing moderate to severe drought, while around 50% of the state is experiencing moderate or worse drought. From a historical perspective, it appears that the levels of drought that will affect Minnesota in 2022 will be very similar to those that affected the state in 2021. As for Clearwater County, around 30% of its land area is under a moderate state of drought. The problem is that 30% of it is Lake Itasca, which is the water source for the Mississippi River. This problem area is located in the southern half of the county. When viewed through the lens of history, the situation could be in a lot worse state. Around 50% of Clearwater County was affected by a severe drought in 2021 during the same period. But even though the drought in Minnesota is one of the reasons why the river is drying up, it is not the primary reason. How does the river's water level get affected by tributaries? A tributary is a name given to any freshwater stream that joins the Mississippi River farther downstream. Over 250 smaller rivers and streams feed into the Mississippi, adding to its overall volume of water. According to the available data, the Arkansas, Illinois, and Red Rivers, in addition to the Ohio and Missouri Rivers, are among the key rivers that contribute to the formation of the Mississippi. It is important to keep in mind that the drainage basin of the Mississippi River, which includes all of its tributaries, is the largest in the United States. In terms of the drought, the following is the status of the river's most important tributaries. The lack of precipitation in the latter part of 2022 is primarily to blame for the decline in the water levels of the Ohio River, which is experiencing a drop as a result. At the same time, the Ohio River flows through a section of the Midwest that is largely impacted by moderate to severe drought. This section of the Midwest has been particularly hard hit. The Ohio River was once completely devoid of water in the year 1908. The Missouri River According to statistics, more than 90% of the Missouri River Basin is experiencing circumstances that are significantly drier than typical. At the same time, a considerable portion of the state of Missouri that is traversed by the river is in the midst of an abnormally severe to moderate drought. One of the primary causes is, once again, the dearth of rainfall. 
Another factor contributing to the dry conditions of the Mississippi River is the fact that its two primary tributaries are also experiencing drought conditions. In a nutshell, the Mississippi is not getting the typical amount of water it usually does. But despite this, the United States frequently experiences drought conditions. It is considered that high temperatures, which are implicitly induced by global warming, are the primary cause of the mega drought that is currently ravaging the majority of the western section of the United States. The absence of rain could be considered the second most important factor. There is currently a drought affecting around 87% of the western United States in 2023, and according to some studies, the mega drought could continue until 2030. This drought affects roughly 60% of the surface area of the United States. Because of this, climate change is one of the primary reasons why the Mississippi is losing its water supply. For instance, the drought has been plaguing the state of California can be traced back to man-made global warming. On the other hand, the Mississippi River is suffering from a lack of rain and a major reduction in the amount of water coming from its tributaries. According to statistics, around 40% of the mega drought severity can be ascribed to changes in climate. This latter factor affected the way soil moisture is replenished as a result of precipitation. Even though the majority of the United States has been subjected to prolonged periods of high rainfall over the previous 22 years, this has not been sufficient for the soil to regain its moisture as a result of the rising temperatures. Even though the United States experienced wet years in 2017, 2010, and 2005, data shows that certain sections of the country's territory have been in a moisture deficit since the turn of the century. And this is the case, although 2017 was a particularly wet year. At the end of October, it was reported that the level of the Tennessee portion of the Mississippi River had plummeted to an astounding minus 10.75 feet, making it the lowest level it has ever been measured in the annals of history. In connection with lows, the following are the lowest water levels ever recorded for the Mississippi. The St. Louis gauge recorded a record low of minus 6.10 feet on January 16, 1940, and the Memphis, Tennessee gauge reached a record low of minus 10.70 feet on February 10, 1937. Since the end of October 2022 marked a level of minus 10.75 feet, that is no longer the case. The Greenville, Mississippi gauge had a record low of 6.70 feet on February 4, 1964, and at the time, that's no longer the lowest water level on record. As can be seen, a significant amount of time has passed since the Mississippi River reached levels that were considered to be record lows. In the case of the Memphis gauge, it was around 85 years before the record was, so to speak, broken. At this time, the Memphis Gauge is continuing to observe water levels that are at or near record lows. In the middle of January 2023, the gauge read minus 8.73 feet, which was the fourth lowest level ever recorded. And that's going to do it for today's video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel for more great content. And thanks for watching.